Oh, let me start my video so I can even check my face. Oh. My face clear now. Okay, I think it is. Um, yeah. Maybe I need to upgrade my laptop. Because the camera does not look so cute. Ah, uh, okay. Hi, Jonas. Hey, how are we doing? Okay, we love you. I need to get water. Oops. Okay, please um, make me a host, Jonas. A host. Okay. All right. I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that. Hi, Abdulaziz. Hello, Abdulaziz. Hello. I think he's muted.
Dara, you're welcome. Thank you, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. You thank you. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm okay. Okay. Let me switch on my video a bit. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Um, Dr. Babalala, good afternoon, sir. <coughs> You're welcome. We can't hear you. You're muted. Oh, thank you so much. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah, we now can we hear, hear you. you. Oh, thank Let's you so start. much for the opportunity to speak to the brilliant brain. <laughs> You're welcome, sir. Uh, it's unfortunate Some, uh, I'm calling you from the school and they took life. So I'm depending on my laptop battery and I'm depending on my phone to work because the network from the Wi Fi has cut off because they took life. Okay. So, okay. So I pray the battery will last me and then the phone to will ask me and I pray they will not call me now because if they call me it may cut my connection. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Hi, Dr. Good afternoon. Hi Diary. Hi Mishak. How are you doing? Hi. I'm fine. Mishak. Hey Samuel. Samuel. How are you? Ah, I'm good. Jimmy. How are you? So, so, Mr. Hello, Sam. Diary. Hello Mishak. Hello. Hello, 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 Hello. 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 can talk where he is. They can only listen. Okay. Um, Dr. Babala, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. I think you can put your phone on. Do not disturb. So you will just see the missed call. Why do not disturb your connection? Oh, do not disturb. You know, I'm just a small. I'm still old school. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's well, just one of the main uh, one of those one of those options where you have your uh hotspot, your data connection to switch those on. Just check one of those menus, sir. Up today, sir. Okay, my phone. Yes, sir. Okay. Have you seen it, sir? All right. So you will get the missed call box. They won't ring up. Okay. All right. This phone, I've, I'm, I'm still looking for it. Under which settings do I have that? I mean, you don't have to. Yes, you don't have to really go to the settings. Just scroll um, from your drop menu, from your own menu where you have the Bluetooth, your Wi Fi, airplane mode, and okay. the rest. Okay, all right. Yes, sir. Okay, you can start your... Okay, so we'll go straight to the program now. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Okay, so um, we're here again for another session. Thank you for um, everyone that has been participating. And the eyes of the understanding will be enlightened. <laughs> okay, so we thank everyone that has been participating. We thank you since the beginning of the year for being a part of this program. And today we'll be talking on um, assessing funding opportunities for forestry and related projects. And um, so I will call on Mishak now to invite Doctor so we can get straight into the program right now. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Jumoke. Okay, well, before moving straight to that, uh, we have, uh, he's a big man. <laughs> he's a big man. He's a PhD student in the US. And we have a Jumoke, the person who just uh, finished talking. Uh, she's in the Netherlands and myself, I'm in Nigeria. Okay. <laughs> I'm in Nigeria. Okay, we trust God to transform us soon. All right, then we have <laughs> Ola Olua also in the Nigerias <laughs> and uh, Adigun Azan also in the Nigerias currently. Probably, let's see, before the year ends, 
uh, maybe we'll be speaking from somewhere else, different from here, believing God. Okay, so it's great to have it's great to have um, everyone. I, I would like someone your lawyer to just say something in thirty seconds, briefly. Okay, just a greeting. Okay, hi everyone. Hello, Samuel. Uh, hello, my name is uh, Samuel Ande. I'm a PhD student in the uh, United States, and I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. Um, thanks to the team members, Ola Luwa, Michelle, Jumi, and everyone. Uh, I've been making this happen, and I'm so glad to be part of this uh, program today to at least hear Dr. Babala last speak about Asensei uh, funding opportunities in poetry and related projects. So, and I hope we can all learn one or two things from me. Uh, thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you. you so I think um, Alex, so Alex, Alex is uh, one of our, our guys. Alex. <laughs> Alex is more like an like an advisor to the Forestry Roundtable team, and he's been doing um, so great. Alex is in Spain, and he's doing very well. You can see Alex is looking different from when he was in Nigeria. So, you show me the way. <laughs> All right. So, uh, today we are discussing assessing funding opportunities uh, in forestry and related projects, and this topic is uh, is of importance to us because. Um, there's, there are a lot of opportunities that we don't know about. Um, a lot of this is going on at an inter international level, national level, and um, um, we, we are not getting these things, not because we don't have what it takes, but because we are not well informed, and information is power. And that is why today we are focusing on this. And our special guest is in person of um, Dr. Uh, Fola Babalola. Uh, I'd like to read from what I have here. I don't want to say it from my head. Okay, then I'm going to add some FEZT. <laughs> if FEZT is the dictionary. All right. So, <laughs> so Dr. Fala Babalola is an associate professor with specialization in forest social economics. He's a consultant to FAO, visiting researcher to the University of Pretoria, South Africa, and the founder of Safe Sahara Network. He has received various funding opportunities ranging from competitive research grants to fellowships, scholarships, and travel sponsorships for more than two decades of his career. His bachelor, master's, and doctoral projects were funded by ANAFE, also by AFORNET, that's AFONET, and IFS. He has received competitive grants from ITTO, RUFORD, British Ecological Society, National Geographic, NROF South Africa, Tech Fund Nigeria, UNDP, GEF, SGP, Nigeria, among others. He will be giving practical tips on how to assess funding uh, in forestry and related projects. But uh, I would like uh, uh, Dr. Fala Babalala to do the honors also so that we can know him better because I know this relationship is forever and we're going to be doing a lot together in the future. And several people here will be collaborating with uh, uh, Dr. Fala Babalala to do great things in life. So I'd like to pass it on to Dr. Now. Thank you very much, sir. We're glad to have you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm very grateful for giving me this platform once again. And I want to appreciate the team for the good work you are doing in this country. I pray God will continue to enlarge your coast and take you even beyond your expectation. I really appreciate what you are doing. And as rightly mentioned, uh, my name is Ola Babalola. And I'm from Nigeria. I school in Nigeria and I live in Nigeria. Although I do a lot of things outside Nigeria, I go for conferences, I try to even net network, I collaborate with people outside in Nigeria. And currently I'm doing a lot of things in even outside Nigeria. So let me try and share my screen as I start the presentation for today. So um, let me look for my PowerPoint. And sorry to cut you, sir. Why doing that? Um, if you have any question that you'd like to ask, please just drop them in the chat box so that after doctor's presentation, we can take the questions and uh, we can get answers to them. Okay. So.
All right. Please do you can you find my can you see my screen, please? Yes, yes, we can see it now. Yes, sir. Okay, let me put it in presentation mode. Okay. All right. Is it okay now? Yes, yes, yes. clearly. Yes. All right, Very that's clear. fine. So once again, I appreciate you all for giving me the platform to speak today. And as rightly mentioned, I'm an associate professor of foreign social economy from University of Ilorin here in Nigeria. I have an NGO which I currently run, which is uh, named Safe Sahara Network. The focus of the NGO is we are saving nature and we're using that to empower people at the grassroots. So we, go, we do a lot of empowerment program. And I'm also visiting lecturer to the University of Victoria and South Africa, where I assist in teaching a course and also I supervise both masters and PhD students. That's what I'm currently doing. And as a way of introduction, let me start by saying this thing. Most of the information that has been said about me is from my, what I can call a humble background, because I actually start, I started my study from uh, a village school, where I call a village school. And through my background, I was able to look at uh, funding opportunities to proceed with my academic career because my parents were not uh, that rich and I grew in where we struggled to be able to even eat in the house. So the only way I can use to further my education is when I'm able to get funding assistance. So that was the propelling force. That's what really pushed me into exploration of funding opportunities, especially at the international level. And from, from, from all what I've been able to do, I'm, I'm so happy because I was able to get some feedback. I, I applied for my first funding when I was in secondary school, you would not believe it. And, uh, I, and that is Federal Scholarship Board uh, Scholarship, but I did not get it then. Uh, but that doesn't discourage me. But I proceeded, I continued to apply when I entered into the university. And on entering to the university, I was able to get my first forestry grant that supported my bachelor's project. And that was ANAFE, it's called ANAFE, it is in Kenya, and that was 2002. And from there, I'm continuing to apply for funding and I was able to get my first international scholarship for a short training also in, in Uganda. And that was given by Tropical Biology Association, TBA. And this opened my eyes to funding opportunities. And from there, I've never given up. And after then, from all what I've been doing over the years, over two decades, I was able to get about 20 grants. Currently, I've been able to get 20 grants, which makes both individual and collaborative grants. And this means that the grant I've gotten is, is, is being the one that is behind my research that I've done over the years. And apart from the 20 grants that I've, I've mentioned, I've been able to get about 45 other funding. We cut across scholarships, fellowships, sponsorship, travel to events all over the world and all that. So these are some of the opportunities I've been able to get after I, I sat down and look at my life and says, I must continue, I must do something to be able to sponsor my career, to be able to support my academics. And so it has been a propelling force. So some of these things I'm going to tell you today, part will be read in those some of those things I read in book, that, but majority of them will be some of those things that come from my practical experience from what I've been able to develop and know over the year. Now, first thing first, let's get this thing right. Getting funding opportunity is not a matter of luck. I normally tell my students, my colleagues, I tell them it's not just because you have luck, that is why you are getting, you are getting opportunities. You are getting opportunities because one way or the other, you are hard work or you have been able to sell and market your idea properly. So I'm going to tell you guys this afternoon that before you can talk about getting funding opportunities, it's about being hard work very well, you do your homework, you're able to do your assignment, you're able to do a lot of search, and, then, and again, you're able to package this thing into a very good idea. So you need to, to be able to do this, you need to learn or develop the skill, and you need to constantly apply. 
And lastly, you will never give up. Even if you are rejected, you do need to give up. You still need to continue to apply. Now, what are the forms of funding opportunity that are out there? I know some of you will know this, but in case some people are listening to me for the first time, I would like to share some of the forms of funding opportunity that we have out there. The number one, we have what we call scholarship. Scholarship is also financial assistance for education. That is to fund your education, whether at the master's or PhD level, or even from undergraduate level. Then we have what we call grants. Grant is a non-refundable fund that we use to support your project. You have a project, you can get a grant to be able to support the project. Another one is fellowship. We, use, we, we have said fellowship has to do with maybe the part of the money is spent on your behalf, why you use, why part of the money is sent to you. It can be under funding locally or internationally. So we use another word, we have fellowship as another funding opportunity. We have sponsorship. Sponsorship may be in the form of support fund for maybe travel or to fund one activities or another or to spend. So we have sponsorship. Another one we have is job. Maybe teaching assistantship or research assistantship. If you're able to get teaching assistantship or research assistantship, you can get funding through there. So that's another form of funding that you can be able to get in sponsoring your project. Then we have something we call donation. Donation, it can be in form of gift or contribution from a funding agency or a foundation or a body that gives funds. So that's another one again that you can get. So these are the various forms of funding opportunity that are out there for students, for undergraduates, for postgraduates. And you need to explore all of them to be able to get at least one way to fund your project or to support your academic or your career. So you can use any of these keywords to search online to be able to look for opportunity that match into your own discipline. So use this keyword to match into your discipline. You can use it, add it to forestry. You can use scholarship for forestry, grant forestry, grant fellowship, forestry fellowships, forestry sponsorship or forestry teaching assistance or forestry donation. These are the keywords you can search in Google and opportunity will appear to you. Now, I quickly want to say this one for those of you who may be interested in postgraduate fellowship, uh, postgraduate scholarships. What are some of those things I can give you advantage ahead of your colleagues? What are those things that can give you advantage over those people that you are applying together, your competitors? Now, Number one, extracurricular activities. I've heard a lot from this platform. So many of you have given the example that these days is not about academics alone. It's not about your scholastic alone. It's not about your certificate alone that can give you scholarships or grants. Curricular activities, especially extracurricular activities that you carry out in school can give you a head above your colleagues or some other people you are applying together. So I don't want you just to go to school or to be in any organization or society and be high. You can engage in extracurricular activities that can boost your CV, that can boost your, uh, your, your personal profile and that can add value to you. And you can use that in your CV or you can use that in your uh, activities. Now, the second thing I would suggest is that a number of you need to engage in, you, you need to have engage in some trainings or you go for symposia or you go for conferences. These are forums that can add value to you, that you can make connection, that you can initiate collaboration, or you can have network. So you can package this together in your CV, and people will know that you are not alone. You are, you, you, you are not working alone. You share your idea. You disseminate your research findings. This is what can add value to your CV again. So try and attend training, attend symposium, or try and attend conferences. Now, this day is not only when you travel physically. You can even attend all this thing while you are online. You don't need to travel. So please attend all these activities and add them to your CV, add them to your profile to be able to push your profile in applying for postgraduate opportunities. The last one I'm giving is volunteering. Please try as much as possible to volunteer. I see a lot of youth having holiday, having break, and they sit in the house watching television 24-7 without Having a form of volunteering or work. You go to school, you didn't volunteer for any activity. These are some of the things you need to package into your CV. To be able to let people know that you are working, you are, you, you are giving your time for people and invaluable, you are using it to serve others. 
using your time to serve others. And if you can give your time in serving others, it adds value to you and you can add it to your CV. Next one is scientific publication. I normally tell all my undergraduate students, it's not until when you get to study level that you can publish your work. I got my first international paper, I think in Springer, I got it for my first degree for my undergraduate uh, project. So please, you need to publish your work, even if it is in conference proceedings, get it published. And by the time you add it to your CV, they will know that you have opportunity and you have potential of getting your this is published and whatever, who, there's no supervisor you want to get that you will see that you have published previously that will not be interested in you. They will not, they, it's not that they are trying to bring up somebody, somebody who is a novice. So try to publish your work, publish your assignment that has, that have data, publish your undergraduate thesis. If you are in master's, publish it. If you are in PhD, you don't even have a choice. Publish and publication can open doors. And lastly, have somebody who can be a mentor to you. Your referee can use them as your referee. So get somebody like a mentor. A mentor can put you through. And this platform is a place where somebody can be mentor. And I, that's why I say I appreciate what you guys do. So get mentor who can mentor you, who can guide you, who can put you through, who can help you to review your CV, review your motivation letter, review your application. And through that, you can be able to scale through your competitor. So this is what the message that we have for those people who are applying for postgraduate scholarship. Now, I've had a number of people asking, how can they get supervisors abroad? Because now it's, it's becoming popular that for master's degree and even especially for PhD degree, they will always ask you to get a, post uh, a supervisor abroad. And this is somebody you don't know. And this is somebody you have never met. And you want to convince the person to, to sponsor you, or be to supervise you. So please, how do you get a supervisor abroad? I'll quickly tell you one of the points. In getting a supervisor abroad, yes, you have not met this person, but you need to go to the university website of where you are applying. Try to look for somebody who is a potential supervisor. And when you have seen the person, you have to communicate the person, please. Don't communicate outrightly, asking the person to be your supervisor. The first thing you need to do is to know something about that person. You need to read the profile of the person. You need to look for what the person is all about, his research activities over the years. You can get all that on the university website, on the research gate, on LinkedIn, on Google Scholar. And then after you obtain all that, you need to read very well. Then develop a good communication skill by sending a good email to the person. When you are sending the email, don't send it right away by asking the person to be your supervisor. Write it by telling the person you have you are read about him, the research is doing, the research you are interested in, and, and these are what you will tell the person. And when you get feedback from the person, because if you write me now and you tell me everything I've been doing online and you pick a particular project that I've done, a particular paper I've published, you tell me the findings, and what you are interested in, and a question from it. If you get a reply from me, that is when you can now follow it up by asking the person to be your supervisor. So this is one of the tricks that we use in getting supervisor. And through the supervisor, you can get hands to sponsor your graduate project. All right. Now, how or where and how can you search for international funding opportunities? I normally has PS student asking me where, how, where, how. Let me answer one of those questions here. Now, I'm going to give you a profile of where you can look for to get funding opportunity, information about funding opportunity. The first one, use search engine. I use Google a lot. So I want to encourage you, search. I've given you some keywords that you can use to add to your discipline. Add it to your discipline and then use it to search. Google is has a lot of millions and millions of information that have been put together as a database. Search it for opportunity. Number two, there are different calls and advertisements that used to go out every time. Please look for those calls and advertisements. It can be online, it can be on website, it can be even through a mailing list. We have a number of mailing lists going around these days. You can join mailing lists, you can join WhatsApp group, you can join LinkedIn group, you can join even Twitter group where they can be sharing with you information. Please. 
join mailing list. Through mailing list, you can have access to valuable information. Number three, you can use funding directory. There are different funding directory now with a lot of database. I'm going to share it after this slide, some funding directories that you can explore. So funding directory can give you information about opportunities, about funding opportunities. They have done their work by pulling this thing together. Another one is website of university. We have a lot of universities abroad, but those the number of our universities in Nigeria are not doing it. But universities abroad, they normally dedicate different sections of their website to funding opportunities. Try and explore this section of the website. Look for the available funding opportunities. It can even be smaller one, industries and all that. Please try and look for website funding directly. Now your lecturer's profile, whether you like that lecturer or you don't like that lecturer, go on their website, go onto the university website, Go and search to their maybe Google Scholars and uh, their LinkedIn profile and all that. Try to look for those opportunities that your lecturers have won in the past. If the lecturer is from your department, it's indirectly telling you that you can also explore that opportunity for yourself. My students should go and look for my profile and look for all the opportunities I've secured. You can try to look for that opportunity, try and apply for it too, because I've already given you information that. These opportunities are available for you that you can also explore. So look at your lecturer's profile and then try and get some of those funding opportunities that they have obtained in the past, and you too can try to explore them. Another one is your colleagues' achievements. When your colleagues get opportunity, please, it's not the time to be jealous. It's not the time to be envy. It's time for you to be to, to challenge, to challenge you to go and explore such an opportunity too. I remember when I was in the university. And when I was doing my master's, there's this colleague of mine that we normally compete for scholarship. We normally compete for grants. We normally compete for fellowship or sponsorship. So if he has won one, I will try and win it. If I won one, he will try and win it. Too. So always try and follow your colleague. Let your police achievement be a motivation for you. Not a time to envy or to feel jealous, but to be a motivation for you. And apply for the same and try to explore for the same. And lastly, Acknowledgement section of publications. Whenever somebody gets grants, it's a must for you to put it in your acknowledgement. Who gives you the money to do the project? So whenever I pick up projects, dissertations, even paper, published paper from journals, I normally try and look at the acknowledgement section and look at who gave them the money to do that work. If the work is into my discipline, I try to look for who gave them the money and try to explore that too. So I'm opening your eyes to acknowledge this section of publication line. It's not just to look for who gave you, who is my father, who is my mother, who is my teacher, who is my lecturer, who has seen me in canning out the world. Those are things they will put. But most importantly, look for who gave them the money. And then it can, give, it can be a pointer to you if you can explore such opportunities. Now, these are the funding directly that I was telling you about. This funding directly can give you a whole lot of data you can explore for future opportunities. We have Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv, you can explore Tel Aviv. The big one. You can explore Front of Africa, Colors of Africa, Instrument Two, or Front Net Services. These are some. These are some. We have a lot of funding database out there you can explore. But I'm just giving you this as an example. You can explore it. This is a book. You can see a book I'm showing you here. It's called Compendium of Funding Opportunities for Africa. You can, this is a PDF blue. You can Google for it online or I can share it with you. If you have interest, I can give it to any of the guys you have here. They can post it on whatever platform they have. This book has a lot of opportunity that you can explore. It has a lot, it's a compendium of funding opportunities for Africa. And these are what, where you can explore to get funding. Now, today, I'm not going to go into grant proposal writing because it's an opportunity, it's, it's, it's something that you can explore online. I know a lot of you must have done project one way or the other, but because of our time, I'm not going to writing of grant proposal. It's something that you can learn even online, you can read a lot online. But what I'm going to go into today is how can you understand funding agency before you can submit application, because you can submit proposal. What are those things you need to understand about funding uh, agency? And this book, again, the primary session of this book, you can read it. It has some information for you. And 
That information is what I'll quickly go over now um, about what you can do to be able to understand funding agency. The thing you need to do before you submit application in understanding a funding agency, number one, you need to read about your potential funding sources. If you are able to find out that a particular organization is giving fund, please, the first thing you need to do, understand them. Identify their, if they have a funding, a, a, what they can sponsor. So if you have a project, what organization can sponsor me? That is the first stage. Then if you're able to understand, uh, identify a whole number of them, maybe you use Google or you use database, site and all that. If you're able to understand, uh, identify a number of them, then you proceed to the next stage. And the next stage is the information to look for about that organization. The first information to look for is their mission or their subject interest. What are they interested in? The population that they cover, the geographical area. Some of them will tell you they sponsor only East Africa, not West Africa. Some of them will say they fund only Southern Africa, not Eastern Africa. So you need to look at where do they focus on so that it will not waste your time. It will not cause a rejection. Because a number of our students, a number of our researchers submit application by not looking at the geographical coverage of the organization. So to reduce rejection level, look at the geographical coverage before you submit that application. And then look at your mission. What, what's their mission? Are they forestry focused? Are they biodiversity focused? Are they social, social, social project? Do they do humanitarian work? You need to know before you submit your application there. Number two, what type of funders are they? Are they government agency? Are they multilateral development bank? Is it a private foundation? Is it a family foundation? Is it a corporate sponsor? Is it an individual sponsorship? You need to understand the type of funding agency you are supplying your application to. So in many cases, type of funder determines how, if you're able to understand them, it will let you know how that fund, funder approach funding. It will let you know how they review their proposal. It will let you know even the requirement that they are looking up to. So if you're able to know the type of funder they have, it will let you know all this information that proceeds. Now, another thing you need, to, you need to look for in that funding agency is what type of support that they give. The type of support that they give. Now, is it a project support that they fund? Or is it a travel or conference that they fund? Is it a challenge grant? Is it endowment? Do they give even general operating support? Or do they give in-kind support? You need to know the kind of support that they supply before you apply. This will guide you in knowing what you can ask for. Now, another thing you need to know about your funder is, what is their funding pattern? Do they give, how many times do they give fund per year? Some gives two times, some is only once. So if it is once, you know if you meet this year, you have to wait the next year. If it is twice, if you miss the first round, maybe you can wait for the second round. So you need to understand this very well before you apply. Then what is their range of value? What is the is it, what is the highest money that they give? What is the lowest value that they give? Some give small grants, some give big grants. Please try and understand that before you supply, before you apply. Then so the funder are what single or multiple grants a year. Maybe if they give only once or twice, or does the funder support indirect costs, or they support direct costs, and why? At what rate? You need to know all this before you fund. Now, what types of organization and what specific organization are the funders supported in the past? Try and see who they normally support or what they are supported in the past. Do they support only university colleges? Maybe they support local grassroots organization or international organization that they only give their money to, or maybe religious organization they give the money. You need to understand what kind of organization they support. Or and has the funder support my type of organization in the past? Try, please try and ask, try and explore. It's when you know this one that will guide you whether you should submit your application there or not. If you don't support your type of application, your type of organization, your type of uh, maybe individual, you need to know so that you not waste your time. Then does the funder have special requirement or restrictions? Maybe they, have, they seek for unsolicited or solicited proposal. 
Do they always ask for letter of inquiry before you can submit? Please try and know. Uh -huh. Then do the donors have a program specialist who you can contact? If they have that, you can now make an inquiry. If you can go ahead to seek for qualification and all that. Now, do the funders have a special, a specific proposal application process or specific proposal format? Please, you need to know. Although they will put this one in their call. So please try and know if they have a specific proposal or application process, or they have specific proposal format that they follow. You can't just drop your proposal in whatever way you want to that funding agency. They can reject it. So try and follow it up. Another important thing is the proposal deadline. Please always look for the proposal deadline and try and apply a day before the deadline. Because if you delay it to the day of the deadline, maybe it's that day that the network will be down, or maybe NEPA may decide to take like that day. You can see, as I'm presenting today now, even while in school, NEPA is it, taking life, and I'm depending on my laptop battery. Maybe your laptop ran out of battery and you cannot meet the deadline again. So please make sure you apply before the deadline. If you're, able, if, if you're able to do that, even if there's unforeseen circumstances, you can still make up within the next one day. Then when is their next deadline? If you meet the deadline, when is the next line, line, deadline? Do you have enough time to meet up with that? These are some of the things that I want you to know, please, before you send your application. Now, let me try to give you some personal lessons that I've learned over the years. These are some of the things that you may not read in books, but these are some of the things that I've gathered over the year to be able to know how I can access or secure funding opportunities online or internationally. Number one, getting information personally is the best way of seeking, of looking for opportunities. Yes, getting information from the public is good, but it works best when you get personal information. You don't need to develop, you don't need to develop the habit of waiting for people to tell you from the opportunities before you can apply. I normally tell my students that look for opportunity, look for opportunity, search internet. Before every other people can get it, start and get it, try to apply on time and you leave it. So please start as much as possible to get international information at a personal level. Don't wait for people, don't depend on people. Do not wait for people to inform you. Rather, inform yourself. That's the first key point I want to give you today. So when you seek for opportunity personally, you can be able to apply on time. Now, number two. I want you to build track record with small grants. I've had one of my colleagues who was asking me some time ago that he needs a grant of like $100,000, $100,000 pounds before he can be able to say that he's, he has arrived or he has won the grant. No, build your grant from the smaller level. Even if before you can win a big grant, they will ask you, do you have track record? Have you managed grant before? Do you have grant you have won before? So before you can apply for any grant, you need to start small. So start with small grant and build on it. Small grant is easier to get, even rather than bigger ones. So try and get smaller grant. How small the money may be, try and win that one. And when you have won smaller grant, small grant will build track record you need to get big one. And no grant is too small. I've won smaller grants and I'll be able to get big grants. So please, it is my small grant, a built profile for me to be able to get a bigger one. Number three, celebrate your winning colleagues and apply for the same. If you have colleagues who have been able to get grants, who have won grants, please celebrate them. Try and look for them. Surround yourself with people who have, who have, success, who have successfully won grants before, who have grant success stories. They can be a motivation to you, and they can even guide you. They, you can even use their platform to apply for your own grant. They can assist you because they already have experience. So please don't let us, don't be a, a, a kind of jealous, a, a envy, or you can you develop a wing not asking the information. No, no, no. Try and look for people who have won grant and surround yourself with them. When your colleagues are, when your colleague, junior or senior, win grant, it's not the time to feel jealous or envy. Then let that be motivation to you. Now, let me go to number four. Have a mentor. 
A mentor is not compulsively somebody who is very close to you. A mentor can be somebody who is very far. It can even be somebody you have never met before. It can be somebody you have read his profile online. So have somebody you look up to. It can be secretly as a mentor. When you are, and then who, especially somebody who has achieved more than you, let them be a motivation. Mentor is not necessarily a senior person. Mentor can even be a junior colleague, somebody who is lower than you. My students have been mentors to me, and have been mentored to somebody who are old, who are older than me. So when you are talking about mentor, people normally look for somebody who is a professor, who is a lecturer, who is a senior lecturer. No, 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 no. A junior person can be a mentor. So please try to look for mentors, whether they are far or they are close. And now let your mentor motivate you to apply for funding. Use mentor to motivate you. Number four, never be intimidated to apply for funding opportunity. You get funding if and only if you apply. And you get nothing if you do nothing. So getting funding opportunity has to be about applying for it. You have to apply for it, you have to apply, and you are not intimidated. So you get 50-50 chance when you apply. You have nothing when you don't apply. So I want to encourage you that you apply for that grant. Apply for that funding opportunity. Number six, explore benefit of professional society. Please try and join professional society. I was able to use the platform of in my societies to be able to get grants, to be able to know, to be able to get access to the information. So it is not enough for you to join professional body again. It is being active. Be active there. Let them know you. When they send email, when they are on the mailing list of international society, when they send mail, try and respond. Even if it is only acknowledgement of the email or by giving respect and by appreciating them, by that they will know you. And when you are active, they will know you and then you are trying to explore their benefit. Build social network in that professional society. Try and know people in your society. Let them know you. And through that, you can be able to explore funding opportunity within the society. Never let previous failure prevent you from future application. When you get funding opportunities, celebrate yourself. When they send you, we regret inform that is i've received a lot of regret inform you that when they start sentence like that i don't normally read the many i just close the email because i know they are not taking it so as those people who have gotten opportunities they will tell you how many they have applied for before they get that one so i want to uh, encourage you guys that you see propose you see proposal rejection as opportunity to be better to improve so be positive when you have rejection, just uh, encourage yourself by giving excuses for the funders. E.g., you can just say, maybe they don't have enough money now, then they will give me next time. That's a way to encourage yourself to keep applying. So challenge yourself to be better and continue to apply for that funding opportunities. That's another way you can improve yourself. Now, get inspiration from the field. There are some funding opportunities that I was able to get by going to the field. So go to the field for inspiration to write good proposal. And number 10, don't be carried away with unsuccess. Apply for more. Success is not ending. So don't live by your past glory. Keep climbing the ladder of success. Keep applying. So once you get one, don't think that is the end of it. You have arrived. No, 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 no. Nobody has ever gotten to the point of arrival. Continue to apply, apply, apply. Now, keep your focus from the money. Please, I want to say this. The best proposal is written when you focus on the work and not the money. So let the project be your focus when writing proposal. Look at the project, not the money. Remember only the, remember the money only when you get to the budget. Because if you focus too much on the money, you just be thinking about the money while you are writing proposal. And you will not write a very good proposal. So let the focus be on the project, on the work. And rather not on the money. Now, let me quickly give you some specific example of funding opportunity that I've been able to secure and how I've been able to get some of them. Now, for my undergraduate, for my first degree, I told you that was in 2022, in 2002. For my undergraduate project, I was able to secure this ANAFI. It was, it is, it was called ANAFI then, African Network for Agriculture, Agroforestry, and Natural Resource Education. I was able to get $1,000 then. 
and you can know how the value of one thousand dollars and two thousand dollars. So it was a competitive grant that my department informed me about, and through my departments, I was able to apply and I got the grant, and they gave me a support letter. So through my department, I was able to get this fund. Your department can get some information if you get close to your HOD or some of your, some of your lecturer, they will know some of these funding opportunities that are out there. So through my department, I was able to get the information. I put together the proposal and I was able to get an app in 2002. I don't know, maybe they see a good currently, but that was what I did in 2002. For my, before I started my PA and my master's, I got this uh, ITTO, it's International Tropical Tingle Organization. This was, it's, it's based in Japan. I got their postgraduate fellowship and it's a grant for postgraduate research. So it's an individual one and it's a personal one. So I did the work based on uh, based on the my observation on the field. I accompanied one of my lecturers to the field, collect a data for his PhD work. And when I was collecting, as we seen him collecting data, this, the, the proposal just came on my mind. The research came on my mind and I quickly jotted it down. So when I went online, I looked for opportunities and I saw ITTO and I developed it for ITTO. And I saw that I did a lot of background check on ITTO, and I saw that they meet my, my type, they, they can fund the work. That was when I started developing the program, and I studied how ITTO is sponsored, and I used it in guiding, in guiding my work, and I applied. Even when I was applying, a number of my lecturers discouraged me and said, oh, this is too big for you, you cannot get it, it's for lecturer, it's for, for, it's for proposer, it's for professors, it's for senior researchers. I developed it. And when I got it, about three thousand six hundred dollars. Then that was in two thousand and five, and a number of my colleagues put them to the next next year, and the number of them are winning it in that time. Although right now Nigeria has been has been removed from the list of ITTO funding because Nigeria have not been paying the counterpart funding. But that was how I was able to get it there. I got the idea when I went to the field with my lecturer, and I studied the profile, and I studied the mission and vision of ITTO and that. I was able to apply in 2005, and I got the $3,600 for my. So after that, I got about AFONET. I got to know about AFONET to my supervisor and to my lecturer in the department at the University of Nevada. And I developed a proposal for my MSc project. And it was on agroforestry. And I support and I, I submitted it to them. It was African Network, African Forest Research Network. And African Academy of Sciences, Junior Scientific Fellowship. And I was able to get about $5,924 then. That was when I was doing my master's. And I know about the grant to my supervisor. So supervisor, your lecturer and department can give you hint some of these grants, and then you can apply. Now, for my PhD, for my doctoral thesis, I was able to get International Foundation for Science, and that was, I got $10,000, and that was 2008. It was a personal grant. And I got to know about the grant through one of my supervisors and one of my lecturers. So it is highly competitive, but I gave it a shot. So you can always, write, when you write a good proposal, just try and explore. But as I told you, you try to understand the funding agency before you submit. So that was 2008. I developed it, and I was able to submit, and I got the grant. So I, uh, it's about knowing the right and the right way. So now this grant is a very special one. 2009, 2009, I got a grant from education faculty. This is for education. They sponsored the grant only for education. And I'm into science, I'm into forestry. And when I studied the organization very well, they were asking for grant that focus on education of Delta Africa. And so, and when I look at the grant, I study very well. And I look at what can I write in forestry that can make up education of their type. So when I study the grant very well, and I discover that, whoa, I can write on impact of hawking or forest products and how that hawking can affect the education of their type. And lo and behold, they gave me the grant. So I, I was able to put together hawking of Forest product on the street and how implication of working on forest product can impact on girl child education. You can see how I was able to match forestry with education. And I was able, I only gave me about 30 million, uh, if that is the, the money in France. Now, 
when I was moving up, after I developed, I, I, I started Tropical Biology Association Alumni Group in Nigeria. I discovered that through the alumni group, they have a score grant that they can give us to organize events. So through that, we were able to organize a feed trip to go and carry out what we call feed expedition. Small guy from is feed expedition. I put together some team of young guys and we went to the, but before that, I put a good proposal and I built up the team and we were able to win 1,500 pounds that sponsored us to the field and we were able to, we, we spent about two weeks of the field. And through that, we even, after we went to the field, we came back, we even wrote about five publications that we published in journals. And that is what we, we, we achieved from a small grant that we got as a support for alumni group. So if you join some society, some society can have grant for alumni group in that country. If you belong to the alumni group in the country, you can get funds to that. It can, some people that are, that are a member of that, that are a member of uh, Commonwealth Scholarship and all that, they have association that they can explore some follow-up grant for their work. Now, British Ecological Society Outreach Grant. This is what I got when a young guys, the alumni group of some young guys, when then I was still, uh, I still belong to the alumni group of this PBR, PES in Nigeria. So we organized a, a, a conference together in Kenya. And when we organized the, the conference, we we're looking for money to sponsor. And that's when we stumbled on PES, the Ecological Society Outreach Grant. So on behalf of the group, I applied for the grant. 2,000 pounds, and we were given the money to organize a conference in Kenya. And from the grant and other grants we got, they were able to sponsor even my trip to Kenya attend the conference. And we look at conservation conference and all that. So young guys who have team up together and be able to look for sponsorship to fund your project, to fund your activity, to fund your event. So this is another way you can explore British Ecological Society outreach plan. You see, I don't know, maybe it has, it has expired, but this is 2021 on, year was on about a few weeks ago. Now, another one is TBA follow-up grant again, and I go to organize a conference in Nigeria at 2,500 pounds. You can, this, that's what I'm telling you that if you belong to a society, a group of set of people, an alumni group, you can use it as a platform to apply to grant, and you can win grant to organize the event for yourself. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, another one is, I belong to Society of Conservation Biology. I'm the president, currently the president in Nigeria. And they were able, they advertised that they want to give small grant to people who want to, who can organize a small project in their country and all that. So I put up together the proposal and we're able to win only $690, $690 is a grant that I know is building a profile for me. I know it's small. But I wanted to do it profile. And we're able to even travel to the field to collect data and analyze it and write a report. That is a plus again. So I got this 2015. Now, you can see I'm giving you a kind of history of how I was able to use small grant to win a bigger grant. So let's continue. Then it is all these small grants that I put together to be able to justify my experience, manage grants. And then I was able to do this actual one grant of the federal government of Nigeria for my research in the university. So I won their institution-based research grant in 2015, which I put together some teams and the money run to some millions that were able to uh, implement the grant in 2015, 2016 in, in my school. So smaller grants that I won previous, that I won previously was the experience that I put together in writing for this uh, head fund in my university. Now, after that, I was able to write for Roof of Small Grants. So from Roof of Small Grants, I was able to win 490. That is 4,950. For by using looking at a community project. You know, Roof of normally sponsor community projects. If you have idea of community project that you want to do something physical on grant that has to do with community, it can be conservation, it can be forestry, it can be tree planting, it can be anything that has to do with assisting community to develop. It's what we for normally from. So I developed this small grant together and was able to win that to carry out how can we use forestry to reduce deforestation in rural area and mitigate climate change. So that was what I developed for report and they gave it to me. And 
Now, when I traveled to South Africa, I was able to win the NRA plan because it's an incentive funding for retail research. When I got there, I looked for information. I was able to get information. So I, su I supported my side and I was retail researcher. When I achieved the retail researcher, they gave me funding from 2017 up to 2020 before I can be retail. So this is institutional grant. So whenever you get to any institution, plan is flawed. If there are any funding opportunity that can support your project, you can explore that. Then idea why idea why normally give you equipment. I applied for this idea where we can create project with some students and we don't have binoculars. So I applied for them and they sent binoculars to me. I, to win about, I won four binoculars, new one that they sent to me. I've had about some of my students that won. A laptop, some of the equipment for the lab. If you own it for lab, they give feed equipment and all that. So go and search for idea why. Idea why give equipment. Undergraduate, whichever level you have, you can apply for as long as you justify the project. Then African Bird Club, they give grant to especially with those one on the way. So I partner with my students, we're able to do some projects in secondary school. Capacity building project in secondary school. So you can explore that too to do something. You have an idea in capacity for junior one in forestry, in forestry limited discipline, and funding responsibility. Now, this is my second group of grant, which I got in about 5,000 pounds. And it's about going now. You know, the previous one was to gather information. So see, this second one, I use it as develop cook stove, efficient cook stove. And I'm introducing to the local communities. So this is a community project that has to do with the reduction of deforestation or to reduce pressure on deforestation. Now, National Geographic, you know, all these smaller, smaller grants are the one and all. To be able to win the smaller grant of National well, Geographic. National Geographic was able to give about £23,000 and dollars, which, which I'm able to now implement in green school initiative, planting in schools. And building a, a network for school students to be able to know about forestry and environment and conservation. So this is a national geography. You know, it's the same national geography that normally puts this uh, documentary online that you watch on DST. They are the same. So they have funding opportunities that they give out if you're able to write very good. Then the last one that I just won in 2020 is now GEF, which is under Global Environmental Facility Small Grant Project. That they gave me the money to implement a green school initiative and to establish some, something I call garden, school gardens, that we are using to teach students how to plant trees, how to establish nurseries, how to raise vegetables, and how to go about empowering themselves for the future. So it's about seedling production for tree planting, gardening production for food security. So this is what I just won and it's the ongoing project. So what the lesson I want to bring out from all this thing that I just told you is start small and build on it. Start small and build on it. And then you can use small grant to win a bigger one once you're able to build your profile. Next step is this. Let me be rounding up with this for our time. Reanalyze your skill now. What are you missing? Search for opportunities and apply. Look for scholarship, youth for grant. And then let me appreciate some of the organizations that have funded me over, over the years, that have given me money over the years. And these are some of them. I appreciate them. And lastly, I appreciate you all for listening to me. And I say thanks so much for the platform. So I hand it over to uh, you guys to continue. Wow. Wow. Thanks a lot, Prof. Thanks a lot. This is this is huge. This is huge. Yeah. Like <laughs> this is huge. Okay, P personally, I didn't know there's there's this uh, so much opportunity in 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 this field, and it's 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 amazing. It's amazing. So uh, we would like to take questions before before we move forward. Questions? Are there any questions in the chat that we need to take right now? Jumoke. Okay? Jumoke. Okay? Yes, I'm here, I'm here, how to? Okay, please take the questions if there are any questions. Yeah, I'm waiting for people to type in. All right. Are we all okay. here? Okay. 
So in case we have, um, maybe some people want to ask questions without typing. Let's take, let's take um, those people. If you have any question, you can just raise your hand. You can raise your hand. Signify. Just signify. You guys know how to raise hand, right? Okay. Or signify directly. All right. Okay, uh, Alex. Hello. Let's take you. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. There's a question from um, packaging on the chat from somewhere. Oh, I guess I skipped that. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah. Jimmy, you can take it. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you, Samuel. Um, Jaxel, thank you so much. Um, Samuel says that as regards the publication of papers from undergraduate projects, how can students, students handle the issue of lecturers trying to publish their work without having their names on it, without the student's name on it? So maybe you can talk about proper um, strategies to better collaborate with lecturers. Excellent, thank you very much for that question. You know, your lecturer will only publish behind you when you did not show that, that interest to publish before you had it. See, before I start supervising my own, I normally tell you that this work was something that I, want, I don't want to get to the end of the shelf. I must publish it, and you must come with me to publish it. I've even published a number of the projects that I put them on students. I was looking for the student to give a copy to the student. The student could know where to be found until when I was able to get her on WhatsApp and, and send a copy to my own. So before you graduate, if you know that you have aspirations to go for master, please build this habit or this interest as for that. So your lecturer. I want to get my and then and try to know the idea and let them know. Because if you don't let them know, your lecturer will think you don't have interest. And when you show this habit of I don't have interest, you will publish behind you. I know it's not a good ethic. Publish behind your students and not put their name. It's not a good ethic because the student is the one that went to it. It can be under the supervision and guidance of the lecturer. Yes, but it's a good thing that you put the lecturer put your well, when I know some of them that do normally don't put me. I normally put me. And I even have students to read it before I submit. And I will even have the students to develop a plan that I will now finalize and improve. And then I can submit if the students don't know how to submit. Or I will have my students to submit as a way of mentoring them how to submit. So I will encourage you to develop the interest. And if you develop an interest, you need to write. You don't wait for your lecturer to write. You can be the one to initiate the writing and send it back to them. If you're not good enough, the lecturer can pass it back to you or print it right and send back to you. But I want you to develop the interest to write, and then you can write. Always do that. So when you write, it's, it's, the paper may not fit that Elsevier, Springer, Tip and Fancy, plus paper, our journal. There are some other journals that are institutionally based and are journals that are society based that you can submit your paper to. But please, I don't want you to submit to any of those journals now that we call, uh, uh, what do we call this? Those ones that, 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 that they just. Predatory? Uh, predatory, sorry, thank you. Predatory journals. Predatory journals, they will just, just ask for money, you pay money and they publish it, even if it's good or bad. They will not even review it. Don't mm -hmm. patronize because it's so, even not good for your paper. It's not good for yes. their paper. They cannot use it for, for their promotion because they will reject it. So please start and look for donors that at least they are to some extent acceptable at society level or acceptable at national or local level. So that is that on that. All right, Chamaka Melda. So Chamaka Melda. Can we have? Chair Maka Imelda. Chair Maka Imelda. Can we have you? Chair Maka. Okay, while waiting, you... for, while waiting, waiting for Chair Maka to speak, um, um, Doctor, someone is interested in joining your network. Um, 
the Safe Sahara Network. This person is asking how to be a member. Maybe that could be an opportunity to volunteer as well. Oh, excellent. I'm, I'm opening the floor for Safe Sahara Network. I can post my number here. I'm on WhatsApp. You can WhatsApp me. I will send the link to you. You can join our WhatsApp group. And then through that, I, we can, I can send a form to you. We have a form that we normally give our volunteers. People can volunteer. Now we want to have different states. People can be in different states and then try to engage them or involve them. Right now we are planning, we are planning so many things, but the most important thing is for you to first join our network. I will send, I will put my number on the sign then. You can send WhatsApp to me. The question that you want to be a member of the Sarah Network, and then we can add you to our, our network. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. Or Alex, if if Alex, if you if you have access to the uh um Google form where they can people can fill to be a member of a Safe Sahara Network, I know Alex is my right hand, is still my one of my you know he left as a program. I will send it before he ran away to Spain. So drop mm -hmm. the link that people can fill uh, to join Safe Sahara Network on the chat here. Thanks. All right, thank you, sir. Okay. Thanks very much, sir. Okay, I think Chiamaka Imelda, are you ready or we should move on? Okay, if um if Chiamaka is not here, I'm going to hand over to Aditula Lua to, to, to take over from here. Okay, can I speak? Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Meshak. Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can hear you. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, today's event. And to Dr. Babalola, we want to sincerely appreciate you. Thank you so much for your time and for doing justice to the theme. It, it, it's been an, um, a great one and elaborate one too. We want to sincerely appreciate you. We want to thank you for always being there when we beckon on you. And we say thank you so much. And um, we, we, we sincerely hope that when we call you in the nearest future uh, on some other event or probably on the same event too, you you gladly um, respond to our call. Thank you so much, um, Mesha. Okay. I also want to thank everybody for joining us. Thank you so much for believing in this vision. Thank you for believing in this um, in this great initiative. And uh, um, okay, okay. Um, while I was posting in the course of the week, I said uh, this is the 10th edition of the Forestry uh, Roundtable. And also, this is uh, we are hosting the event for the 10th uh, trade month. I think um, that calls for celebration, Meshak and Jumoke. I think that yeah, calls for celebration. Is. Yeah, 10th trade month. We are, we are so delighted. We are so happy. You know, we have our statistics. We have the value speaking for us and the influence is massive and we couldn't uh we wouldn't do we would not have achieved this achieved this great feat without your support we want to thank you thank you for your unending support and we know that when we call on you again you will surely join us and to our uh ever supportive host if sir we want to thank you thank you for for always being there um alex or Notunji, thank you so much and to our other team, team members and samuel um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Digun Azan, thank you for your support. And to my wonderful sister and friend, Jumoke Ogunzime, thank, thank you so much for your support too. And to my uh, brother, Meshak, thank you for being amazing. And thank you for um, being a great friend and brother too. Over to you, Meshak. Over to you. All right. So uh, I think that, 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 that will be the end of, uh, of the round table for today. Yeah, I'm before... gonna... yeah. uh, sorry. We're going to okay. get the document from Dr. Bab uh, Fola Babalala, the presentation and the PDF. Then we're going to send it to everyone's mail. Please, we want to advise, <clears throat> want to advise, if I think the email gets into your promotions or updates, I think there's a way you can, you can do it that will get to your inbox. Because um, from now on, we're going to be sending a lot of information opportunities uh, via your mailbox. So please... Uh, open the mails. We, we check the status of those who open, who do, who, who don't open, and all. Please open it, and a, a lot, a lot is packaged for you. Jimmy. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, let me say this briefly. For those interested in the Safe Sahara Network, um, Sahalex has posted the link. 
So I think you can use the link. Okay, um, my remark goes to um, Dr. Babalola. Thank you so much for today's section. I actually, I really enjoyed it because it's, I find it interesting even personally for my own self. I, it's, it's impactful for me. Thank you so much for this beautiful piece you presented to us today. It's really enlightening for me and I'm grateful for the opportunity as well. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. yeah thank you sir so everyone you can turn on your video turn on your uh unmute yourself and greet each other this is a community that's what's called a round table so feel free everyone so greet someone can i, do can I do my face yeah yes meet, meet new people meet new people greet dr fola as you unmute yourself let's celebrate him Ah, Olu, Olu, are you looking fresh? Ah, you are yeah. whining. See my, see my face. Yeah. See me, I'm looking fresh. Seriously. You are, yeah, actually. Think, it's really nice having, having Dr. Thank Baba Lola today. Um, Thank you. I'm so sorry I, I'm coming in late, but I'm sure I will be able to meet up with other things that I've missed by the time the, the slide is, is shared. In the news. But I must tell, I want to drop kudos to you guys, Alex and others. Hello, can I go on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah you can go on. You can go on. Okay, okay. I want to throw up a um, storms up for you guys, Alex and others. Thank you. It's a wonderful thing that you keep on you're never tired. And I tell you, many of us secretly, we are your fan. Even in the midst of busy schedule, we still find time to join the round table meeting. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Can I talk? Yeah, you can. You can. You can. Um, yeah. I, 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 please, please help us stop the live stream.